Number one says that each of the statements is always true. Determine whether the converse is true. So they're giving you a statement in each one. This is true. We're just reading the converse, which is where we switch the end in the beginning and decide if the converse of the statement is also true. Um, all right, so in this first one, the converse is if two angles are congruent, then they're vertical. And that is not true. And we can provide a counterexample because vertical angles is where the two lines kind of cross each other. So here's a vertical angle like this. And vertical angles are always congruent, but congruent angles aren't always vertical because we can draw congruent angles that aren't vertical angles. So these are two right angles. They're congruent, but they're not vertical. Um, so this one would be false. Um, the second one, the converse says, if two lines intersect to form right angles, then they are perpendicular. So if we have two lines crossing and they form right angles, then they're perpendicular. That is true. C, the converse says, if a point lies on the, oops, lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, okay, so we have a perpendicular bisector of a segment, two points that are lying, or a point that is lying on it, then that point is equidistant from the end points. So if we know we've got a perpendicular bisector, okay, is a point that lies on that perpendicular bisector always equidistant, okay, from these two endpoints? Are those two segments always the same length? And that is true. Um, D, the converse is if the base angles of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is isosceles. So if we have a triangle and we see that the angles are marked congruent, does that force it to be isosceles? And it does, so that's true. E, if two angles are supplementary, then they form a straight angle. So the initial statement here was that if we have a straight angle, um, two angles that make a straight angle, then they're supplementary, which is true. These always total 180. But if we just know that the angles are supplementary, meaning that the angles add up to 180, do they have to make a straight angle? And that is false. Um, so we could do this where I have a 120 degree angle, and then I could have a 60 degree angle. These are definitely supplementary, but they're not touching, so they don't make a straight angle. This um, counterexample for converse A was would also be a counterexample, so that's false. Number two, in an isosceles tri in this isosceles triangle, AD is congruent to AC. Kieran knows that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, so across from these congruent sides are the congruent angles. What additional information does Kieran need in order to show that AB is the perpendicular bisector? Okay, so that this is the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So there's a couple different things you could say here. So one would be that AB is the angle bisector of angle BAC. Whoops. And the reason that that would be helpful is if we had um, this angle marked congruent to this angle, then we'd have angle side angle to prove that the triangles are congruent, meaning that these two would have to be congruent to each other, making them 90, and then these segments would have to be congruent, so perpendicular bisector. Um, so that's one thing we could know. We could also have... Um, that B is the midpoint of DC. And the reason that one would be helpful is that if we knew this was congruent to this, then we know the triangles were congruent by side angle side. So then you could get that those are equal angles that total 180. So those would be 90 as well. So this one, would allow us to use um, angle side angle. This one would allow us to use side angle 
the side. All right, number three, Han and Priya were making a kite. Han cut out a piece of fabric so that there were two short sides of the same length on the top. So he cut these two to be the same length and two long sides on the bottom to be the same length. Priya then cut pieces of wood to go through um, to go across the diagonals of the kite, so here and here. And then they attach the wood like this. So Han asked Priya to measure the angle to make sure the pieces of wood were perpendicular. So asking her to measure um, to make sure that this is a 90 degree angle. Priya said, if we were careful about the lengths of the sides of fabric, we don't really need to measure. It has to be a right angle. So complete Priya's explanation to Han. So why is that true? And so I'm going to put some um, letters on here so that we can more easily describe this. So if I look at this and I put A, B, C, D here. Okay, then we'll go ahead and type out this explanation. So um, since A and C are the same distance or equidistant away from B, and D, they must lie on the perpendicular bisector of segment BD. And so therefore, AC must be perpendicular to um, BD. Number four, prove that triangle ADE is congruent to CBE. So they give us some information here. So let's start our proof with that. So we know that angle A is congruent to angle C and AE segment AE is congruent to segment CE um, because it was given to us. We also know that angle DEA, so this angle here, is congruent. So DEA is congruent to BEC because they're vertical angles. Therefore, Triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBE by angle side angle triangle congruence. And so we see that we have two angles um, with the side in between. Number five, triangle DAC is isosceles. What information do you need to show? that triangle DBA is congruent to CBA. So we wanna prove that these two triangles here are congruent to each other with side angle side theorem. Okay, so we wanna get side angle side. So let's remember if we're trying to prove those two congruent, AB is in both of them. So we would know that that segment is congruent. So the other thing that we need to know is these two angles are congruent. So you could just straight up say that. So you could say, I need to know that angle DAB is congruent to angle CAB. So you could say that. Um, or if you wanted, you could just say, so or we could say um, that AB is the angle bisector of angle DAC. So either way, it gets you to the same spot. So if they told you it was the angle bisector, you'd know these two angles are congruent. Or you could just say, I need to know those two angles are congruent because that's the meat of it. Um, write a sequence of rigid motions that would take CBA on to figure MLK. So we need to get them touching. So we're going to need to translate figure ABC by directed line segment and you can pick what you want. I'm going to get A to land on K, so AK. 
then rotate the image of ABC until the image of B coincides with L. So I moved A onto K and then I rotated it until, the, until B landed on L and then that'll get you to have the whole thing on top of B. Uh, that'll get ABC to land on KLM. All right, then we have this quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Jada says that it is a square because folding it along a horizontal dashed line and the vertical dashed line gives us four congruent sides. Do you agree with Jada? Um, so it is a square, but she's kind of lacking a little bit in the explanation because she only got us four congruent sides. We also have to talk about these angles being right angles. So her um, conclusion is correct but she didn't justify the quadrilaterals angles being 90 degrees. Um, so in order to do this, she could say how each of the little triangles are isosceles. Right triangles, since all of these sides are since these are all radii, so this these two sides are the same. So if this is a ninety degree angle, and then the base angles have to be equal, you could use triangle sum to do one eighty minus ninety divided by two. Um, so e she could say how each of the little triangles are isosceles right triangles, meaning that their acute angles are each forty five degrees meaning that the quadrilaterals angles would have to be 90 degrees since they are made up of um, two 45 degree angles. So if you had, you know, you have this is 90, so 180 minus 90 gives you 90, and then divided by two, so then each of these is 45 and then all the way around. So all of these little ones are 45. And so then you have 45 here, you have 45 here, that makes 90. So now you've got four 90 degree angles and four equal sides. So then it's definitely a square.